You know, these are truly challenging, challenging times for really all of us. And we know you have so many questions about COVID-19. And today we are getting answers from a gastroenterologist who can address several areas of concern for us. Nicole, in the newsroom where Dr. Nick at San Paul is ready to answer your questions. Nicole. Thank you, Louie and Christy. Dr. San Paul, thank you so much for joining me today. Happy to be here. I, I want to ask you a little bit about your specialty. We're learning late today that the coronavirus can affect people with gastro symptoms and side effects. Can you explain to me, you know, what those symptoms are and how that happens? So what we basically are learning and the experience in China is actually providing a great deal of data. Um, yesterday in the American Journal of Gastroenterology, they released a data set of 99 patients, of which about 48 and a half percent when they came to the hospital initially, their chief complaint wasn't respiratory symptoms, cough, or fever. It was actually GI symptoms, primarily loss of appetite, diarrhea, nausea. Wow. So what should people do at home that have any sort of gastro, you know, issue? So right now we're still developing what we should be doing in terms of the algorithm of whether or not you have GI symptoms. Okay. Obviously, as healthcare providers, we have to now take that into account. If you're at home and you're developing GI symptoms, you also want to take into account that only seven of those 99 only had GI symptoms. So if all you're experiencing is just nausea, maybe a little diarrhea, um, loss of appetite, that could be something else. People are experimenting now more with their cooking, given that they're home more. And so there may be a touch of food poisoning or something along those lines. But it is rare that it's just GI symptoms, not GI and respiratory. Doctor, I have had a few people ask me already, are there any sort of over-the-counter medications that you can go to Walgreens and buy and have at home and take? Uh, for what specifically? For anything, for anything related to COVID-19, for, you know, anything that you're already taking, you know, any sort of Tylenol, should people still be taking that? Should they stop? So the primary thing that we can tell you is that if you're starting to experience symptoms, obviously get to a healthcare provider so you can be assessed and properly tested. If you're developing fevers, um, the WHO has recommended that we don't use ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. And if you are having high temperatures and malaise and body aches, to stick with um, acetaminophen, which okay. is Tylenol. Um, obviously, the over-the-counter medications for congestion and cough can be used. There isn't one that stands out. But what I can tell you is that ibuprofen should not be used at this time mm -hmm. and that we should be sticking primarily to acetaminophen. And for those watching out of the country, that's paracetamol. Okay. And doctor, last question for you. If you get the virus, if you get COVID-19 and you, you know, you go through the isolation phase of 14 days, can you get it again? It's an excellent question. There is some data coming out of Japan where a couple of patients have had reinfections. Um, it's still left to be discussed. Um, the CDC and the WHO hasn't totally released what's the role on reinfection. Mm -hmm. But what we know from our first year med school and all the physicians out there is once you're infected, you technically do create an immunity. And so based on the fundamentals and laws of what we know in science, you should not be able to get it again. Okay. There are concerns, however, that there may be multiple strains, which could be a concern. But again, that still needs to be fleshed out. Still so much more to learn for all of us. Thank you, doctor, so much for answering all of Thank my questions. We will be right back after this short break.